Are you a South African musician trying to figure out what a music publisher is? Welcome to this episode where I plan on demystifying just that. Now, before we get going, we have to basically understand how basic copyright works in order to understand what a music publisher is and what it does. So let me start it off. Basically, when you are making a song, there is a composer who sits down, typically a beat maker sits down with someone writing a song typically called the author, an author and composer. They sit down together and they conceptualize the song, writing the lyrics, writing the melody and the arrangement of the song, the instrumentation, etc. Once they are satisfied with what they have composed, the composition, they then go to recording artists, session musicians, etc. And they say, here's the composition. I want you to record a version of the song. Once the recording artist has this composition, they go to a record studio and record a version of the song called the sound recording of the song. So there are two halves. There's the sound recording that you hear on radio and then there's the composition side of things of the song which is the underlying melody, underlying lyrics and arrangement of the songs. An example of how the two halves work is the song by Jamie Foxx called Fall For Your Type. Originally Drake and Noah Shabib, also known as 40, sat together conceptualize the song, the melody, and the overarching composition. They then took this composition to Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx then went to a record studio and recorded the song called Fall For Your Type. So on radio, you hear Jamie Foxx's voice, but the actual lyrics, the composition of the beat, etc., belong to Drake and Noah Shabib and his group. So Drake and Forty own the composition side of things, Jamie Foxx and his people own the sound recording side of things. So typically, now that we have two halves established, there are entities in each half. On the composition side of a song, the entity in there is a publisher, a music publisher. And on the sound recording side of things, the entity on that side is a record label. Going back to the music publisher. So what is a music publisher? A music publisher in basic terms is an entity that has compositional rights or a stake in the composition. So what does this music publisher do? Typically, a publisher would sign artists, composers, and in order to sign them, they take a percentage of their composition and they do several types of services for the artist in order for the artist to make more money. Now, since it is a company and there is a lot of revenue streams in the composition side of things, music publishers typically can and do several other things. In my recent experience, the more percentage they take from the artist, they generally are willing to do more for the artist. But basic terms, things that they commonly do with the ones that I have worked with, they sign artists, depending on how they sign the artist, they take a percentage of the artist composition and register the copyright side of things on the publishing side they register them with the CMOs. They typically register with Samro and Capasso and depending on the nature of the publisher, they'll also register them with Sampra. But that kind of starts to blur because Sampra has to do with the sound recording side of things. So let's just focus on the Samro side and Capasso side of things, which is the performance royalty and the mechanical royalty. Now, since there are a lot of revenue streams on the composition side of things, a quick overview to see how these work is to go to the Samro website and see the distribution schedule. You'll see approximately 12 ways that money is sent, 12 times money is sent to musicians, composers, and publishers. These are the several revenue streams. Now, a music publisher, depending on their network and their strengths and how they want to go about running their business, chooses several of these types of revenue streams and focuses on them. One would be TV and film, one would be cinema, sometimes they work with radio, and there are also online and digital places where publishers can work. Now, I've worked with several entities and some take as low as 15% and some take as high as 50%, but it also depends on the type of work they're doing. So the music publishers that I've worked with that take high percentage i.e. about 50%, they usually work in the sync realm, so they get your music on TV, they get your music on cinema, and those high value 
placements where if you're playing only for one minute you get about 2,000 Rand so that is why they take a lot more but I've also recently worked with publishers that take lower 15% and but what they typically do is just the basic where they register your works and they collect royalties on your behalf and then give them to you. So Song Trust is a publishing admin. So they also fall in that realm of publisher. What Song Trust does is they register your works worldwide and collect royalties on your behalf. So imagine your music is playing in Germany, but you're a South African musician. So typically how this system works is Germany, the PRO there, Gemma will collect those royalties and then send them to Samro. Samro will then take an administration fee. Also, G Gemma also takes some GEMA. They also take some royalties and then eventually it makes its way to you. So there are administration costs in there. So what Song Trust does, it, instead of Gemma having to send it down to Samro and then Samro to you, Gemma will collect it immediately from there and they'll also register your works on there just in case the system hasn't updated correctly to Gemma's side of things. But they don't just work in that area they also work at prs and the other big ones ascap and bmi in america they collect those royalties and then they send them off straight to you so i've left an affiliate link in the comments feel free to join song trust but you can rely on the current system where it just gets sent through it also depends on how many streams and how much money you're getting from outside south africa Typically, if you're getting a lot of streams and all sorts of other revenue streams outside of South Africa, I suggest musicians use Song Trust. But if most of your works are being consumed and used in South Africa, then I'll stick to Samro, but make sure you also register with Capasso and Sampra. Song Trust takes about 15% of that money and i actually recently got a paycheck from them last week it was about 200 euros so that they do actually work it's just that on the copyright side of things things take a little slower so you don't expect to see money today i registered about two years ago and i only got my first paycheck this week so it's two years to get the money through the whole system and for the system to get the money to you. And it is similarly with the music publishers that I've worked with. I worked with a music publisher, I signed with them about two or three years ago, and I saw my first paycheck from them last year. This, I got my second paycheck this year. But they work in the sync and cinema sphere. The COVID hit them a little bigger. So the actual payment I got from SongTrust ended up being more than the one that I got with the 50% deduction. So if you are going to go about looking for a publisher, make sure it suits the type of hustle that you're working with. If you are trying to focus on sync cinema, then you find a music publisher that works in that field. If you're trying to focus more on radio, particularly radio and that type of field of music, then you want to try a different type of publisher, a publisher that works really well with artists. So if you want to work in this radio type of things, a big field in there is to be a ghost writer. Publishers also sign writers. So you can, in some instance, write for, let's say you want to write for Rihanna, you know her style. So you write in a Rihanna-esque type way and then a publisher can take that and start pitching it out but that's a different type of publisher i've never worked with one in that field but it is something publishers are also able to do so make sure you match what you're trying to do with your career with the publisher's overall strengths and see what works really well now how do you go about finding these music publishers typically in each country there is some kind of mechanical rights organization or the pro doubles up on the mechanical side of things so they would typically list a broad range of music publishers so capasso has a lot of publishers that you can go in there and see which publishers work but you have to make sure that the publisher really matches what you're trying to achieve in your music career it is also similarly to the record label side of things record labels are different there are major record labels and then there are the independent ones and then there are the micro ones that they'll literally pay for your recording once you've 
paid them off for the recording, they'll only take 20% of your royalties on the back end. But just know that with music publishers, they are companies that own on the composition side of things, and they typically take between 15 to 50% of the composition, and they do all sorts of things to try maximize the revenue they get and you get from the composition you have handed over. If you wanna know how many seconds of TV you need to make a thousand rand, watch this video.